Now we've broken it down, and so now, now that you know the five key words here, is now how do I get from what now? How, what do I got to do as a Christian to help me? Because I'm at that point. I'm at that point where if God don't show up quickly, and I don't care how long you've been saved, it, 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 it gets some points, it gets some situations where if God don't hurry up and show up, I can't be held responsible for what I'm going to do. Amen. I'm just trying to be real with you. It gets to a point where sometimes you can say, God, I'm not rushing you, but you're on the clock. God, I'm, not, I, I'm not telling you how to do this thing because I know you know all, but you need to hurry up, God. Am I talking to anybody in here that you Amen. can say, you know what, if you don't hurry up, God. So now that you're at that stage, that state of mind, where well now I've been hurt by folks that had no business hurting me. I've been hurt by folks that just last week they were praising me. Just a year ago, they were telling me I was the best thing ever happened to them. And now! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lord. Amen. Go ahead. They telling me, they talking about me. Mm. They calling me names. Mm. And as a Christian, I'm supposed to do nothing. Mm. I'm supposed to, to just sit back and take this. Mm. I know you what you're saying, and I've been wanting to preach it. But when, when you say, but the Bible says that he won't put no more on you than okay. what you able to bear. Okay. But God, I'm not bearing this well. Go ahead. Who am I talking to in this place Go ahead. that says, guess what? If you don't hurry up and show up, I'm liable to make the wrong decision. That's why you have to be careful because verse 7 says, Be not wise in thy own eyes. Go ahead. Amen. What does it mean to be wise in your own eyes? You have to be careful. Right here. I like to call this. You have to be careful when you wound it. See, because Go when you it. wound it, you do stuff that you normally Amen. just would not do. Do I have any folks that have been able to be wounded? And guess what? When you wound it, you allow folks to give you advice that you normally would not. Go ahead. That's true. Right. Go ahead now. Look at your neighbor and say, be careful when you wound it. Be careful when you wound it. Because mm. I can look back at my life and realize that I, I left a job because I was wounded. <laughs> I show them. They don't want to give me the job. I'll just go somewhere else. Two months later, three months later, I'm saying to myself, I should have stayed where I was at. <laughs> so you have to be careful when you wound it. So now, you told me all of that, and I get that. So now, tell me, what now? Because we said now stands for not our will. That's what now stands for, not our will. Because if God, if you're not in, if you're not showing up quickly, it's gonna be my will. <laughs> it's gonna be my will. That's why the Bible is clear and lets us know that his thoughts are not our thoughts. Go ahead. His ways are not our ways. Yeah. So I'm talking to somebody in here that you can say, <laughs> if you don't hurry up, I'm gonna move on my own. <laughs> Here's the bad part about moving on your own. Go ahead. Can I be honest with you? The Bible doesn't cover when you move on your own. Go ahead. Ooh. Somebody said, what are you trying to tell me? The Bible says that he knows all. That he directs that path. The Bible is clear. What does the Bible say about when you direct your own path? The Bible says that you pretty much, you own your own. When you take it in your own hands. So Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, let me give you what I got for you today. So it's, a, it's three points that I need you to understand. How do you, how do you deal with what now? I've been hit by friendly fire. How do you deal with the state of mind you're in now? How? 
Watch this. The first one. The first one is you got to understand that you are exactly where God would have you. Amen. Mm -hmm. You are, let me say it again, point number one, if you're going to deal with this, point number one is you are exactly where God would have you. Hmm. I, I can't believe that, Mr. Preacher. Mm. I, I can't believe that God would have one of his children go through what I'm going through. Tell the truth. Hmm. What makes you better than him? Mm. Hmm. Go with it. Bring it. Because did he not say on the cross, if you can take this from me, take it from me. But then he said something that's amazing. He said, but not my will, but let your will be done. Go ahead. Have you said let your will be done? Amen. I know you said it, but did you mean it? Amen. That's the truth. Break it down. That's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Now we can go back to the scripture we just quoted him so blindly that he won't put no more on you than what you able to bear. I know you said it. Let your will be done. But you are exactly where God would have you. Amen. And how do I know that? Because when you was in the blessed state, mm. you was fine with it. <laughs> hmm. Was I really? Yeah. When everything was going great for you, you didn't question whether he had you in the right place. Go ahead now. So that's how I know that God knows what he's doing. Go ahead. That's how I know that he knows exactly where you're supposed to be. Because if not, we would have had a problem with the blessings as well. But we don't have a problem with the blessing. But I don't want to go through nothing. <laughs> Bring it. So you are exactly where God wants you. Hmm. If we go back and we think about it, because when you get in that friendly fire stage, our initial thoughts, you think about it for a second. When you're in that stage, you feel it. Let me, when I hit one that's not true, you tell me. When we're going through a mission, when we're going through being hurt, by church folks, by co-workers. And let me say this, there's no hurt like friendly hurt. Mm. There's no hurt like church hurt. Mm -hmm. There's no hurt mm. like family hurt. Mm. Because those are people that's supposed to be on your side. Amen. But watch this. After all this, is, we're going through all this. The first feeling is, Rejection. I feel rejected. Nobody loves me. Second feeling goes with that. That the feeling of unloved. Hmm. They don't love me. If they did love me, they wouldn't be talking about me like this. Somebody stop me when I say something they true. Go ahead. The next one is the feeling of unappreciated. Mm. They don't appreciate nothing I ever did for them. Mm, so I'm still must be talking good. <laughs> Go ahead. Watch this. But the one I find myself at a lot of times is that feeling of discouragement. Mm. I'm just so discouraged. I've been trying my best to do the best I could. Amen. And it still ain't good enough for Go me. with it. I'm so discouraged. Then the last one. Hmm. Is that spirit of, I'm going to just give up. Mm. Hmm. Anybody ever been there where you just feel like I'm just going to give up? Not on Christ. I'm going to just give up on this situation. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to give up. Be best if I moved on and started over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to just start over. I got news for you. Your path is already predestinated. Amen. So if you don't go through it now, through all right. All right. it's coming back around. All right. <laughs> oh, yeah. And he loves you so much. Go with it. Let me tell you something. He loves you so much. And he's going to give you the same test. You go fast. Ooh. Right. Go fast. <laughs> he's going to give you the same test. Go Young folks, can you imagine if you was in school and you did bad on the test 
And they gave you the exact after you seen the test. You done moved on. You decided that I'm going to do this. And they came back a week, two weeks later and gave you the exact same test. The ones that they already went over with you. You guaranteed to make 100 the second time. If you look the first time. <laughs> See, that's the problem. Most of the times when we do bad on a test, we don't look, we just throw that one down. No I don't want to show mama that test. Uh -huh. I don't need to bring that one home if I don't have to get a sign. <laughs> do we, young folks? Don't even bring it home. I leave it in my locker. Hmm. But that's the news. You're going to take the test again. Mm -hmm. Sooner or later, in your Christian journey, it's coming back. All right. But watch this. So you have to be careful because that's the one we're, we're going over. These number one talks about this is where you lean not to your own understanding. This is the understanding part right here. This is where you have to get understanding. Know that you are exactly where God would have you. How soon are you going to leave? When God is ready for you to leave. Amen. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You're going to go through and get what God would have you to get. Because as you hear me say all the time, it's not about you. Amen. Amen. There are some folks out there that only you can say. Amen. And you have to be strong enough when it comes around to deal with them. Amen. It's some things that only you strong enough to go through. It's some stuff only you can testify to somebody. Amen. So know that you are exactly where God would have you. Amen. But what now, Mr. Preacher? This is for if I don't feel good. You want me to deal with this? When folks talking about me still, folks calling me out of my name, you still want me to, to, to be as Christian as I am? I don't. Because if it was up to me, I'll let you get it. <laughs> no, we used to say, fight, get it over with. Go ahead. Be friends the next day. Shake hands on them. But I'm not God. And so no matter what I think, God says Amen. for you to keep up. Amen. God says you the light. Amen. You the salt of this earth. <laughs> I wish I could help you. <laughs> but I can't. So now you are exactly what God would have you. And so you have to be careful because Proverbs 16 and 9 says, In his heart, a man <laughs> plans his course. Amen. <laughs> but God directs. <laughs> but God, the Lord, determines his steps. Amen. That's Proverbs 16 and 9. It says, In your heart, you've already designed. You know, we do. I'm going to school for this. This is the job I'm going to have. But I found out something real quick when you graduate. You don't necessarily get a job in your chosen field. Amen. That's the truth. And you have a degree. Am I talking to somebody in here that can say, you know what? I did all of this, thought this is how my life was going to be. And this is what God would have me now. Mm. And the bad part about it is you have to understand that there's two courses of action. Everything in life happens either one or two ways. Either God causes it mm -hmm. or God allows it. Go with it. Tell the truth. There's only two ways. Mm -hmm. Amen. You can't force a third way. <laughs> You can try all you want to, but there's only two ways that stuff happens. Mm -hmm. Now, that's if you believe the Bible. Mm -hmm. Two ways. <laughs> Either he allows it or he causes it. That's right. Somebody looking at me like, God causes stuff? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You do know there are some spiritual storms that God allows you to go through, don't you? Yeah. You know every storm is not from the devil. Yeah. <laughs> you do know there are some spiritual storms that you're going through. Right. That's the truth. Right. That's the truth. Spirit led truth. Yeah. yeah. There's some spiritual storms. Mm -hmm. And the difference in the spiritual storm and a storm that the devil asked God to allow you is the spiritual storm. You can't get out of it until God allows you. Uh -huh. 
All right. Amen. <laughs> See, because in the spiritual storm, he's with you. Ooh. Because if you don't believe me, the disciples were on the ship. When the storm was going through, what was Jesus doing? Sleep. <laughs> That's a different story. <laughs> For another time. Watch this. Here's the one that I'm going to say, buckle up, because I'm going to hurt you before I help you. Okay? I warn you. Now, the second thing that you have to do while you're in this state of dealing with friendly fire is you have to wash your face. Hmm. Yeah. What do you mean wash my face? You, you can't always look like what you're going through. Amen. Mm. What are you trying to tell me, Mr. Preacher? Some of us wear our emotions on our face. Go with right. it. Tell the truth. Yes. Sometimes folks can tell when you're struggling. Yes. Yes. Sometimes folks know when not to bother you. <laughs> Ooh. I hear folks all the time. You can walk into work sometimes. You be walking over to speak <laughs> Turn around, they don't want to move today. They ain't bothered them. Amen. <laughs> but as a Christian, the best thing that anybody can ever say to you as a Christian is I didn't even know you was going through. Mm -hmm. Ooh. That's the best thing somebody can say to you. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not talking about the folks that you share stuff with. I'm talking about the folks that see you and they look up to you. I'm talking about the folks that you their superhero. Right. Folks don't like to hear me say that. But you are somebody's superhero. They think that Lord have mercy. That's Jesus Christ himself. <laughs> that's how saved you are to them. And when they struggle, when they see you struggling, <laughs> Go ahead. what do you think they do? Right. If God allows them to go through what are you going to do for me? Somebody that don't pray as much as they do. Somebody that don't go to church as much as they do. What are they going to do for me? See, because they don't understand that he has no respect to the person. <laughs> because to them, you are a superhero. You have something only that, you know, only God gave you. Hmm. So what am I trying to tell you? Why are you in this state of hurt? Why would you end this friendly fire? Do something. Do something while you're in this state. Hmm. You wash your face. So what am I trying to tell you? You have to do something while you're there. Watch this. <laughs> how, how am I going to do something? You first must answer the question. <laughs> the, the question that you must answer, first of all, <laughs> that all of us must answer when you're hurt, when you're going through, the question that must be answered. Are you going to complain or are you going to get busy? Right. Go with it. Mm -hmm. right. Let me say that again. Right. Are you going to complain or are you going to get busy? We have to understand that God, the will of God, is not a destination. Look at your neighbor and say, it's a journey. It's a journey. Stand it's a journey. again and say, it's a journey. Keep saying journey, journey, journey. Journey, journey, journey. journey. See, you got to understand. <laughs> because most of the time, we think when we get there, we stop here at our destination. This is a journey. Go with it. Watch this. I, I, I was listening to something I was reading, and it was a movie on about alcohol. And I did and when you're hurt, you, you really recover. You do know that, don't you? You're going through a recovery period. And, and they, they, they have this thing, this famous quote that they use. And when you're hurt by friendly fire, you have to use, you have to adopt this quote. One day at a time. <laughs> Let me say that again. You have to adopt the quote. One day at a time. Because day by day, I'm going to get better. Day by day, it's going to hurt less. Amen. Day by day, sooner or later, 
Now watch this. Mm. You have to ask yourself. I need a reality check. <laughs> There's nothing better sometimes than a dose of reality. Mm. I don't know about you, but reality hurts sometimes. But watch this. Everybody better off. Everybody is better off when you know the truth. <laughs> Everybody is better off when you know the truth. Because God doesn't want us living in fantasy land. I call it lava land. La la la, I'm just walking around. But sometimes you have to have a dose of reality. Yes, say so. You're not as good as you thought you were. Go ahead. Ooh. Because the Bible says that you have to examine yourself. The Bible says that you ought not think more of yourself than what you really are. Hmm. Am I talking to anybody in here that says, I have a reality. I have a dose of reality. And guess what? Now I know what I must do. So now I'm tired of complaining. I'm tired of, of, of folks. What's the name? I'm tired of complaining about. It's time for me to get busy. 